I guess so. Okay, we started. <laughs> uh, cool. Hi, thanks for coming. My name's Jay, and I want to motivate uh, a little bit at the beginning what we're doing here, or what I'm going to try to do here. So, um, I think the first, the first lecture I did like this was um, many, many years ago with Luke Wilson in America because we had been talking a lot about where juggling was, was headed and um, of course juggling has changed so much with the internet and as everything in life did. So back in the day, Luke Wilson and I were talking about juggling and how it was changing and what might happen next, what, by, what might be the next new trend, uh, what might be, you know, yeah, welcome. The next new thing. So, I have a bit of a habit of thinking about what's the next new thing with juggling. And that's uh, the start of perhaps some stuff I'm going to say today. The other thing to say is I grew up in America, so I kind of had the American perspective growing up, and then I moved to Europe. So then I have the European perspective when I was older. And as well, I teach at a lot of circus schools around the world, so I meet a lot of different people. And this also helps to contribute to this, this a, a bit of a global viewpoint of juggling around the world. I mean, obviously not the complete picture, but um, I am really interested in juggling, and I do try to keep up with juggling. Come on in, juggling online. And I try to see the new videos and read the, the posts on the forums and the Facebook groups and everything. So what I wanted to do today was try to connect a few of these ideas together that I, that I notice in juggling that maybe, um, not saying that you haven't noticed them, but just to point them out maybe concretely and link a few of them together. And that could be a suggestion of where juggling is going to go in the future. So there's a bunch of ideas and concepts that I think about juggling these days that I notice happening in our world, especially concerning the, the culture of juggling. Um, us as a community and the other, the other starting point uh, that made me start to notice the community or notice that juggling was evolving in a, in a certain direction was that, um, you know, when I started off there was Sergei Ignatov and he was teaching <laughs> the Russian method of how to juggle, the, tech, the correct way to juggle. And, of course, a lot of the Russians and Ukrainians have their own correct way to juggle, which are different from each other, and then they like to argue about that. But um, one thing I noticed was that Yuri Postnikov in Kiev, he teaches, he teaches juggling to his students there in the school in Kiev. And I'm, I'm no expert on his style, but from what I understand, uh, it's something about you keep your feet uh, very narrow. Is it, that's right? Is that like narrow feet and kind of throw from the, the shoulder or the whole arm? Seven volt yeah. yeah, nine volt. Okay. But the patterns in Kia, uh, Yuri likes to have them very narrow and high, right? From what I understand from talking to Yuri myself, uh, these patterns are narrow and high, not because it's the correct way to do it, technically, physically, but it's because he thinks it looks good. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. That juggling has evolved at least far enough to, until now that we start to have a, uh, an aesthetic as a choice rather than just being forced of, uh, an aesthetic upon us that, well, I keep the seven balls in the air. <laughs> it doesn't matter what it looks like. They're not hitting the floor. Oh, I'm done. And then Yuri comes along and says, no, actually, your seven balls, it should be really tall and really skinny, etc." So that really sparked my mind and I thought, wow, this is pretty amazing. Juggling's come far enough along in terms of technique that we can start to have discussions about choices in aesthetic and choices in technique rather than just there's one way to do it and it's the right way and it's based upon some sort of perceived you know, physical truth which I don't think exists yet in juggling. We're not there yet to have a correct way to juggle technique. Um, but I think it's super cool that Yuri said, well, you should juggle like this because it looks good, in, in, in Yuri's opinion. And maybe someone else sees the, the key of juggling and they say, well, that looks terrible and it should be a low, fast pattern and, and wide. I mean, Victor Key is really about the whole, the whole circle thing. So Victor Key's patterns are lower and wider than Yuri's. 
And of course, Victor says his patterns look better than Yuri's. So then we have a little discussion there, which I think is really cool. So that's the starting point of all of this stuff I'm going to now say. Um, so future of juggling. Um, well, speaking about juggling being developed enough to have discussions about aesthetics, which is kind of cool. I think as a community, we do have some energy as a group moving forward into the future. So we can either harness that energy and start to have discussions as a community. I'm not saying we all have to agree on the same things, but we could start to discuss a certain issues. And if we, or, or we can just keep having every new generation reborn and they have to fight the same battles and, you know, <laughs> like, they have to figure out what site swap is for themselves and whatever else. <laughs> um, but one of these, these discussions I would encourage us to start having, which I've been going on about for the past couple years and a few of my friends have too, which is this idea of, of what is juggling, the definition of juggling. And I'm not going to get into that definition now, but I do want to bring up a couple of points related to the definition of juggling. And I think that is very, very important to the future of juggling. Um, this first idea is that Eric Oberry is the one who has been really pushing the definition of juggling forward. And everybody seems to think that Eric is making a new definition for juggling. And that's not true. Um, the way language works is, if I say the word cow, we all agree on what a cow is. If I say cow in your mind, you get the picture of a cow. And that's just because we agree on that. If I told you right now, I'm going to use the word cow instead of the word tree to mean a tree, then I say, oh, outside the, the main hall there's a bunch of really nice uh, cows with really nice green leaves. Then we could all agree in this room that I'm talking about a tree even when, even when I say the word cow, right? But if we leave this room and, and you missed this whole explanation I'm doing right now, and you walk out to your friends at the food hall and you say, ah, oh, I'm going to go climb a cow right now, then language doesn't work. <laughs> or it works, but in a very different way, right? They think you're going to climb on top of a cow instead of go climb a tree. So, Eric Oberry is not making a new definition of juggling because you cannot do that. One person cannot make a definition without everybody agreeing upon it. So the only thing Eric is doing is he looks around the world and he says, how are people using the word juggling? So when people talk, they say the word juggling. Oh, how do they use it there? How do they use it there? In this context, how is the word used? And what he's trying to do is he's trying to find the common link between all these people who have the word juggling in their vocabulary. So he's only observing and trying to articulate what he observes, because that's all we can do in the moment with language. We can propose new definitions in the future, so you can listen to what Eric has to say, and you can say, well, I don't agree with you. That's not what I think juggling is. Well, that's fine. That's, <laughs> you, you're, you, you can have your own definition. I can have my own definition of the color red and say, well, this shirt is, is red. That doesn't do me any good when I go out into the community and interact with other people. So you can have a personal definition of juggling, but uh, then it's, your, it's in your private world. And if you want to start to interact with even one other person, you have to have a communication there. You have to agree on what that word means in some way. So I'll just give the, the very broad problem. Again, I'm not going to get into the, the, the specifics of it, but the broad problem is on one side you have people who say juggling is throwing and catching more objects than hands. That's like the, this very traditional definition, right? That's on one spectrum. And on the other side of the line you have juggling is the planets orbiting the sun. <laughs> right? And some people kind of maybe tend to fall in between those extremes. Um, but one problem we have with this spectrum is that people confuse the definition of juggling for how they feel about juggling. So people say, no, 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 you cannot define juggling. Okay, first of all, obviously that's wrong because juggling is defined because we talk about it with our language. So if you can't define juggling, then I can't use that word. So, so just get over that right now. Or you can't define juggling. What, what they mean when they say that is, I don't want you to limit my identity because I define myself through juggling 
and I want juggling to be inspiring to me in my life. That's what they mean. And that's how they feel about juggling. It's like if I say, what is a car? And you say, oh, a car is freedom. No, a car is not freedom. A car maybe represents freedom to you for whatever reason. But a car is four wheels, it's made of metal and rubber and, 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 and plastic and whatever, right? That's not, so a definition of a car is not uh, freedom. Maybe that's how you relate to a car. Um, I had one of the Facebook discussions, there was a post um, by a very famous juggler, and he said, Circuit, the definition of circus is uh, fixing the broken tire on your caravan at 2 a.m. on the side of the road. That's circus. And the thing is, with, uh, with, with, with language, I know exactly what he means. And fuck yeah, that is circus. Yeah. But is that the definition of circus? No. That's how he feels about circus. That's his identity through circus. But he insisted, no, that's the definition of circus. Okay, it's a metaphor. You're using a metaphor. So, this definition of juggling, it, you don't need to be intimidated by it, because it already exists. So a lot of people think, oh, if you define juggling in the future, you're going to limit what we can do. You're stopping the progress of juggling. It could not be farther from the truth. By defining juggling, we're just vocalizing, we're articulating concretely what's already there, so we can move forward, so we can innovate and build upon it. Because the crazy thing is, a few people have said, well, Look, this whole idea of what juggling is now in terms of the definition, it's bullshit. Who cares what it is? I want juggling to be X, Y, and Z in the future. But I think it's so silly. How can you say you want juggling to be X, Y, and Z without knowing what it is now? And especially, how can you communicate that, those ideas to someone if you don't know where you're starting, what, what's our common starting point, right? So I have, a, I have a conversation with you now, and I say, um, well, I saw a juggler at the store the other day, and then half of you think, I saw someone who throws three balls in a sideways figure eight pattern in their free time, and for their lives they do computer programming and get paid and buy food with that money. And the other half of you think that when I saw the juggler at the store, I saw a, a, a person who makes their, 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 their money to buy food by going on a stage in front of people and throwing apples and then eating them while they throw them, right? Like, so even if I say I saw a juggler and then I want to start to try to convince you of what a juggler should be in the future, I don't even know what you think I'm saying right now. So it's a bit ridiculous to say we shouldn't define juggling and we shouldn't, uh, it's going to stop us and limit us. We can only progress through defining what juggling is. And I really encourage you to look up Eric's definition. It's on, uh, it's on objectepisodes.com. It's a forum that Eric and I run. And there's a post about the definition of juggling. And if you have about two weeks of your life, I encourage you to read the thread. Um, it's quite long. <laughs> but I just want to go back to this idea of um, not just the word juggling, uh, or, or, yeah, like the definition of the word juggling. We have a lot of words in our, in our, our, our vocabulary and in our community that are undefined. So the word juggler is undefined. Uh, to Dan Holtzman, he said very clearly, a juggler is a professional performer who earns money with the main discipline being of the technique of juggling. And for him, that's all it means. So if you say, oh, I'm a juggler, and you know, I go into the gym now, and I look around, and I, I'm walking with my imaginary Dan Holtzman beside me. And I say, Dan, look at, look at that person over there. And he goes, oh, you mean the juggler? And I go, no, no, the juggler. <laughs> They're just a hobbyist. You know, it's just, it's, just a, it's just confusing. So Dan thinks juggler means a professional. Juggler, I think all of us in this room can agree. I hope we could eventually agree that it's also some sort of a form of a hobby. And so how do you say a juggler if you're just going to go practice? Yeah, we don't have language for that yet. We haven't come to an agreement. So I'm not saying we all have to agree with each other immediately, but I would sure hope we would have, start to have a discussion. That's all I'm saying. So we have the word juggling, juggler. We also have the word drop. That's another great example. Uh, this word drop. So uh, the word drop we can talk about for a second. It's also went, underwent a transformation. Um, back when I started juggling, when I was uh, eight years old, um, 
the word drop literally meant for something to fall and hit the floor. And a large part of the meaning of the word drop today is still things falling and hitting the floor. But with the, you know, the, the, the progression of all the new techniques of like the flow arts, well, suddenly you're not letting go of a prop necessarily. Let's say you're doing poi or, or whatever spinning activity or contact juggling. The prop never leaves contact with the body. In that way, it's maybe physically impossible to drop in the way that the thing's gonna hit the floor, but certainly you can mess up, right? If, especially in a lot of these flow, uh, the flow arts, which again, even saying flow arts, I'm gonna get murdered, right, for this whole slander of the name. But uh, in the flow arts, the whole thing is that it's, it's, it's aesthetic. It's aesthetically beautiful in one classical way, I think, normally. So even there, it's even more important that you don't, I say, drop, in that way, it means don't make a mistake. If you're gonna, if you're gonna try to do a, a butterfly wall plane anti-spin windmill, is that right? Um, <laughs> you want it to, to complete the circle. So if you don't complete the circle, have you done it? Have you, have you achieved the technique? I mean, in one way I say no, of course you haven't. Uh, so then uh, you dropped, but it didn't hit the floor. So we have a problem with the word drop. So what do you say? Do you say, oh, I made a mistake? I mean, I have conversations about this with people all the time. I say, how do you think about the word drop? And then they say, no, no, dropping means something hitting the floor because it's the, it's the definition of the English word. It drops, it literally goes down. You know, drop means like going down or something. Um, and then they say, well, I, had, I did a show last night. I had, a, I had two drops, two mistakes, and a fumble or something. <laughs> Right? But again, I just mean we all have a personal definition of the word drop. Um, and if I'm having a conversation with another person, and then I say, oh man, I had a really terrible show last night. I, I did, you know, a drop. I, I had a drop. You don't know what I mean. You don't know if it means I was doing my five Diablo pirouette, and there was a collision in the air, and the five Diablos hit and went into the audience into, still spinning into the soup bowl at the Palazzo Dinner Theater and spilled soup all over the guy's face. Uh, which is a famous Francis Brunn story, by the way. Francis Brunn did a spinning ball into a soup bowl and, you know, that's a drop, right? Or does it mean I was spinning poi? Or does it mean I was spinning light up hugang? Which I can't believe I just fucking said that word, hugang. But because, sorry, uh, not to offend people, but we can argue about Bugang in a second, but... Uh, no, just because it's Michael Motion's thing, but we're going to get to plagiarism soon, okay? Uh, so, <laughs> then we can argue about plagiarism, but... Um, the light up Bugang, and then the battery went out in one of the Bugangs, so it went dark. So is that also a drop? I mean, you just don't know what I, you just don't know what I mean when I say the word drop, is, is my point. And we can uh, argue about Bugangs later. Um, so... So we have the word drop, juggling, juggler, and there, and this brings up a few um, related topics to move the to move this talk forward. Um, and by the way, this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm, I'm ranting and raving about things about juggling, so that's why. So if you if this sucks for you, then this is just what it's going to be. Um, but uh, this idea of jug. So going back to this word juggler, we have we have this idea of. Uh, a hobby culture versus a performing culture. And I just want to clear that up right now, uh, for me personally. I'm just sharing my opinion. You don't have to agree with me. It's a discussion we're starting. Just right now, it happens to be one-sided because it's a lecture but format. But um, this idea of that juggling means performing is wrong. Juggling is not performing. Performing is a thing on its own. And you, when you perform, you can use many skills or techniques. You can sing, dance, act. Uh, play music, you can juggle, you can dance, you can, uh, whatever. You can do storytelling, right? Uh, those are techniques you can use in, inside a performance. But so juggling is not performing. But it's confusing with our language again. If I say, oh, I went, uh, what did you do this weekend? Oh, I was juggling. <laughs> and my friends know I'm a performer, so they think I had a show. And maybe that's true. But maybe I was just rehearsing in the hall. So I just want to say, juggling does not mean performing. Uh, one great concrete example of that, which I would push for in the future, is that when I learned how to juggle, somebody taught me the three ball cascade when I was eight years old, and this is a true story, and they said, okay, you throw one ball like this, and one ball like this, and 
Then you take two balls and you do the exchange, no, don't hand across, no, don't hand across, no, don't hand across. <laughs> they both throw up in the air. Then I did the three balls, I, I, this is a true story, I did three balls, like three throws, and then the person said, and now smile. <laughs> and now smile, right? Why the fuck am I smiling? Oh, it's because as a community and with language and with our understanding of what we're doing, we're not clear on what is performance and what is juggling technique. And they're, 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 it's a mess. They're tangled together. Three catches of three balls and now smile. Why is that? Okay, if you start to analyze it, it's, it's, it's implied that I'm going to do a show. And therefore, I should smile because that's part of performance. Right? It's this whole deeper discussion that's just fucked up that you tell a kid to smile when they do three balls. I mean, okay, it wasn't such a big deal, but I, I think it is it's kind of, it is crazy to me. I get obviously very passionate about it, that we're still stuck with this whole tangled mess of meaning and, and understanding of what it is that we do. Juggling is not performing. You can use juggling in a performance. And uh, would you, should I rant about that for a second? Or should I continue? You want, no? Should I do another thing? Okay, I'll rant about that. So, uh, the thing is, I don't think it matters what you do, uh, as long as you're clear about it. Because I'll give you a good example. When it, growing up in America, a lot of jugglers think they have to do comedy to make money. And maybe that's true, I don't know. But uh, I know when I was young, I also did comedy with my juggling. But then they call themselves jugglers. And then they think to themselves, uh, well, I better go practice my five ball tricks. And then in the, on the weekend, they go have a show, and then they tell a bunch of jokes. And instead of spending the whole week writing jokes, because that's an actual thing you could work on, they spend the time practicing juggling technique, they call themselves a juggler, they identify as a juggler, they sell the show as a juggling show, but then the main takeaway of their show is comedy. And so maybe they should spend their time doing clowning classes, theater classes, movement classes, comedy writing workshops, right? So it's a little bit of a problem how we identify ourselves if we're in the wrong kind of genre or category of how we frame our work. And I just want to say then that a lot of the new circus shows I see today out in the world uh, that call themselves juggling shows, in, uh, a lot of them in France, um, a lot of the shows called New Circus all over the world, America, Scandinavia, Europe as well. Um, they're not circus shows and they're not juggling shows. They're normally theater shows with, uh, with some circus skills in, in there. If we look at a hierarchy of what's doing the expressing in those shows. So if I go see a show, it's called a juggling show, and then the main takeaway is that the, the person is, is being funny or, or is doing dance or is playing music. And there is some, I mean, there's, there's, there's the show, I, I don't know the name, uh, uh, what's his name, Nathan, he does the whole show, Hour Long with the Mud, and he does like two minutes of juggling in it. Nathan, you know, no, I don't know the name. Yeah, but it's a juggling show, okay. We, we can have a conversation about it, just in a, in a short way, there's an hour long show, this is a guy in a pit of mud or something, and, it, and halfway through he juggles three balls for two seconds. And that's the juggling in the show. For me, I would say it's a performance art piece. Um, that's the first you know, main layer of expression of the piece, is performance art or physical theater, something like that. And juggling is a subcategory of that expression. Um, but, uh, uh, wait a second, and, uh, uh, but uh, it's clever marketing, I have to say. Like the, the main circus company in, in uh, Sweden is Circus or Core. They market themselves as a circus company. Uh, to me, they're doing theater shows, which also, by the way, means they should hire actors and not circus performers, but that's another question. But marketing, them, marketing themselves as a, as a circus company is way more clever than a, than a, than a theater company. Uh, because there's so much more theater in the world and they can stand out and be unique through labeling themselves circus. Um, yeah, you, quick, quick question?
Sure, and my point, yeah, so, and I can agree with you, but my point remains that if I identify myself as a juggler and I think to myself in my internal process, I'm gonna go do a juggling show and five minutes of the show is actually juggling. And I'm not saying juggling in a traditional sense. It can be whatever the fuck. I can say that this is juggling. I just juggle, you know, whatever. Um, I, I think for me, I can just take Circus or Core for an example. They think they're doing circus. In the end, they're doing bad theater. And I wish they would recognize that they were doing theater as a main expression internally in the process that they could actually do good theater and they could still sell it as circus. They can still identify to their audience as circus. They can still market it as circus or whatever. But I think you have to have a responsibility to what you're actually doing. Um, that's, that's like my only point I just want to make right now. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's all context. And that goes back to the definition of juggling. It's about the context of what you're doing, by the way. Like, juggling is not defined by technique, it's defined by context. And again, you can find that online and, and argue about that there. Um, speaking of, speaking of, the, of the juggling thing then, um, just to say, uh, juggling as we, as we know it is 100 years old. So there is this, there is this uh, myth myth, I mean, not myth, but this, uh, this propagation of information when I was growing up, of course, it's from Karl Heinz Ethan, that juggling is 4,000 years old, and that's not true. Um, we can find traces of evidence of some of the technique of juggling back to 4,000 years as far as we can tell. But in terms of what, when we use the word juggling today, there's the European Juggling Convention. That word juggling in that title, the meaning of that word is at, at, at the oldest 100 years old. And that's basically a, a short overview of that, is that's when magic and juggling split. Because before that, juggling meant magic and juggling together. And Paul Cinquevelli split the words. And so when we talk to each other today, it's very hard to imagine uh, what juggling actually, you know, what that word used to mean. And when you tell me about juggling today, I think, oh, patterns, you know, maybe connected tricks. I do three, I have like 10 tricks with three balls. And maybe back in the day, a hundred years ago, you would do one trick with three balls, the cascade, and you would do one trick with your knife and your sword, etc. cetera. Um, so this understanding of what we think about juggling as today, as having uh, longer sections, longer pieces of technique, transitions, that, that only started a hundred years ago. Um, so it's kind of cool that we're in a very young art form. It's not so depressing then that when somebody makes a triangle ring instead of a circle ring, that it's, a rev it's not a revolution, but it's a crazy thing. Because um, if you look at other art forms, it's a bit depressing compared to juggling, that like, oh, I have a different color of paint now. Um, that's not crazy to be a painter and have a different color of blue, but to be a juggler to have a different color of blue, apparently it's a fucking problem. And it takes a lot of money and time to fix that. Uh, <laughs> or interest, maybe. Um, where am I going? Oh, uh, yeah, so going back to this idea as well of uh, f following on from everything, everything we've said, um, this idea of what juggling is and what its value is in relationship to theater and dance and how, how we do these things. Um, one thing I've noticed in the past uh, few years, uh, which I think in the future is going to be cleared out, but it's a little bit of a mess, is nowadays when I watch a video on YouTube or Facebook, I'll see somebody doing a three club sequence and at one point uh, they do a trick that is based upon it being really hard. So I should watch the trick and go, oh shit, they're a really good juggler, they practice really long and hard for that trick. I, should, I, I think they're very skillful. And then I evaluate that trick through skill. So then I'm watching the video and, and the timeline keeps going and then there's the next trick and I think it's going to be, of course, based on skill. I thought that was the game I was watching, but no, there's a trick, the next trick is not hard at all but it's very uh, beautiful, right? And there's a good example of this, I think, which is the, uh, a lot of the hula hoop, uh, the hooping videos. You'll see some very technical uh, spinning trip, manip manipulation trick, and the next thing they do the isolation, right? And then I go, well, wait a second. Ugh. A second ago, 
we were doing very difficult things, and I was kind of understanding the world you were, you were painting for me there. Oh, we're gonna do difficult skills? And then jump with no transition, no motivation, into a isolation. And then I go, oh, I get it. We're gonna watch something that's very beautiful now, and very, uh, in, a, in a certain aesthetic and in a certain way. And then the next trick is not hard to do, and it's not beautiful, but it's a little bit not obvious, so it's very clever. And then I go, oh, I get it now. We're, this person's very clever. And so when I watch these videos, I get very confused. <laughs> um, and not just the videos, but when I watch people's performances these days. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think it's, it speaks more about my problem than the people who are doing what they're doing. Because they're just picking and choosing technique the same way I did when I was younger. My only point is that these techniques have different values now. And when I grew up juggling, uh, everything was basically uh, about how hard it was. Oh, you did four rings instead of three rings. Well, that's cool because it's harder. Um, not because it looks better or <laughs> whatever. Um, so this idea, though, that we are mixing techniques together right now very blindly without any sort of general you know, consideration of what's the narrative or how do we evaluate what we're watching. So I encourage you to go watch videos online after this lecture if you want. And then you can say, I mean, yeah, it just, it's, for, for me, I find it really, really uh, distracting. That, that one trick is very, very difficult, but it looks like shit. You know, I mean, uh, it, it's a very hard trick, so it's very sloppy, it's not clean. And then the next minute, there's an isolation, and then that should be very beautiful. And then, but, but then you can also start to evaluate all parts of the sequence based upon these techniques. Because again, I'm, I'm concerned that juggling, generally when I think about juggling for myself, I think juggling is the main expressive thing. So then if I go in one clip, if one clip, you know, somebody's wearing like very, um, looking very random clothing and then they do a crazy like, like nine, nine club flash. And then I go, oh yeah, the clothing is appropriate. And the next moment they're doing an isolation with a hoop. Maybe the clothing is distracting. I don't know. What I'm saying is there should be some sort of cohesion maybe between the technique of what you're trying to express and where it's going. So maybe in the future, I think it's going to be cooled out. Um, like it's all gonna become more clear. Right now we're all still trying to figure it out. And that brings up this idea that, uh, uh, bah, 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 where is it? When I was young, uh, I used to learn, uh, yeah, <laughs> when I was young, um, oh, what, hey, you're a juggler, what do you do? Well, I do three balls, I do cigar boxes, and I do devil sticks. And you would name props. And these days I notice a trend where people don't talk like that so much anymore, I have to say. They would say like, what do you do? Oh, I, I do um, flow, or I do isolations, or I do body movement, or I do sight swaps. And it's a bit less specific about just the props. It's more about techniques. So these days I see a trend, people going forward start to do maybe families of techniques rather than just specific props, prop categories. I mean, when I was young, it was literally like, I do ball bouncing, which meant like I took three balls and bounced them on the floor, and that was kind of it, you know? Um, and these days it's a bit more like, oh, I'm into, you know, I'm into uh, not just club passing maybe, but what do you do? Uh, you don't, maybe you wouldn't even say I do club passing anymore. You would say I do, what, what did you call the cool, the flying bees, the 27 bees? Yeah, yeah, so people are a bit more technique specific now. I, I see that as a trend in the community. And I think going forward, as the flow community techniques and the, the traditional juggling, toss juggling techniques and all the new, new school manipulation techniques, as they all become into one sort of thing, which they are in these sequences, very unorganized, um, but as they all come together even more, it's gonna become more uh, smoothed out and people are gonna talk more specifically about what they do. Um, yeah. What is this thing? Where to go next? Wait, here, words. How long? Oh, yeah. Uh, is that interesting? Talking more about language? Um, yeah, I'll just throw this out there. One thing, again, about thinking about language is uh, these, these, di these words for divisions of time. Um, again, we're, we're really messed up in terms of our performing culture being messed, mixed up with our hobbyist culture. But we have, I think, words for time between the word show and the word maybe throw. And then it just gets smaller and smaller units of time. So, hey, uh, come see my show. And then you think, oh, it's, uh, you know, hey, Friday night, I'm doing a show. And then you think, oh, it's gonna maybe be about an hour long or something, right? It's like a big chunk of time. 
And then I say, ah, oh, you know, in the show, there's a really cool thing I do. It's a, it's an, I have one act in the show that's really cool. And then immediately you go, oh, well, an act is shorter than the, than the show, right? And then you can say, okay, in the act, there's a, there's a special sequence that I love. And you go, oh, a sequence is shorter than act. Yeah, man, in that sequence, I have a really cool trick. Oh, a trick is shorter than a sequence. Yeah, in that, in that trick, I do a crazy throw. Oh, a throw is shorter than a trick, etc. We do, so, so I think on, the, on, the, on the, the ends of this discussion, like the big time and the small time, it's easy. But the fun one is the word trick. So you could, if you want to have fun with your life, you can walk around the festival now and we'll go up to somebody and say, show me a trick and see what they do <laughs> and see how long a time is it. Because we also have the problem that a trick can be Mill's mess and that's a repeating pattern. So show me a trick. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, I'm doing it all the time. Have I done the trick? How many catches is Mill's mess to have it be a trick? Or then show me a trick. Okay, I do a three up pirouette. It's just one. There's a prop. We have a problem with language and time is, is the point here. And it's kind of fun to go around and talk to people. What do you think is a trick? Um, and I can give the example that I always kind of give when talking about this, which is that I went to the Lido in Toulouse to teach. And I told the students, I said, please just pick your favorite trick so we can do a little exercise with it. And this one guy proceeded to show me two minutes of three ball juggling <laughs> with, with three balls. And I said, yeah, okay, thank you so much. Um, but please just use one trick. And he said, no, 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 the whole thing is a trick. Uh, okay. I, I can take his point poetically, but again, language is functional. We weren't there to have a discussion about philosophy. I just wanted to fucking move forward and give the class. Um, but it was just like, no, oh, my trick is two minutes long. In another context, that, that discussion would be wonderful and I would have you know, probably loved it. It was just distracting in the moment. But to say, maybe to him, if he wasn't just talking shit, um, he has a two minute long trick. I think that's really cool. That's kind of crazy. Um, how does your two, so I, I never talked to him more about it, but then it's like, what is a show? Maybe a show is like two <laughs> weeks long. You know, it's like brushing his teeth and taking a shower and putting on the clothes and rehearsing. You know, I don't know. It's kind of cool. Something to think about. You can ask your friends what are tricks. And that brings me up maybe to this idea about, about plagiarism or stealing tricks or borrowing tricks or not borrowing tricks or stealing tricks. Um, and again, super, have a, super happy to have a discussion about this. Um, as it's my lecture, I'm just going to give my opinion for now. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Um, but we can discuss it outside of this forum, online or in person as time allows. But I just want to say, I just want to give my, my opinion, um, that's all. And you really don't have to agree with me. I just want to just take the moment to just give a fucking opinion. So, so the idea is that um, I've been playing a game now for the past five years. And I go up to people at festivals or people I see who are juggling wherever they are, if I see a trick I like. And I say to them, hey, that's a really cool trick. Uh, did you make it up yourself? And then there's two possible answers. They say, yes, I made it up myself. And then I say, um, wow, that's awesome. How did you make up that trick? And a really good example of this story is uh, Toby Walker. I asked Toby Walker this question years ago. I said, Toby, that's a super cool trick. Did you make it up? And he said, yeah, yeah, I made up that trick. And I said, how did you make up the trick? And he said, oh, I was watching some baton twirling videos. And I took this one technique from this one baton twirler and I transformed it into this club trick. It's kind of the same starting point, but with a club it works differently because blah, 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 blah. And then I thought, that's super cool. I'm gonna go watch some baton twirling videos. And then I did. And I found a couple of really cool techniques. And then I translated them into some club tricks. And some of them were <laughs> new tricks that were different than the baton twirling and different than my club juggling because of the way the club is shaped, but the baton technique works. And I had a really fun time with that process. Um, so it was kind of useful for me to have a conversation, just to have a conversation with Toby about his trick. The other thing though, is Toby could have said, or whoever, could have said, no, I did not make up the trick. And then I could say, oh, that's cool. Where did you see it? And then they could say, oh, I saw Emil do the trick. And then I could go have the same conversation with Emil. But 99% of the time, and I'm also guilty of this, I'm not saying I'm above this problem. I'm just trying to recognize this problem and vocalize the problem. When I go ask somebody, hey, uh, did you make up the trick? And they say no. Then I say, cool, where did you see it? And they go, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, so you're doing these chest roll things with clubs, or these tips with clubs. I mean, these techniques, these wrist traps, these techniques that came out in my lifetime, you know, like very concretely within the past 10, 15 years. I go, where did you see it? And then people go, I don't know. 
And I do the same thing. I don't know where I got all my tricks. They're just in the air, right? They're just in the air. And so personally, I think there's a lot of value in trying to understand where your tricks come from. It's also the same as trying to understand the history of juggling to go forward. Again, trying to define juggling to go forward, trying to define where my technique comes from so I can progress my technique. Um, and so my only, my only uh, desire is just to have conversations with people and say, hey, uh, where did that trick come from? Um, if, do you know where it came from? And I think it would be super cool as a community that moving forward, again, in my opinion, that we've started to value that. Just like as a fucking hobbyist. I can give you an example. I love music. You know, I'm super into music. I listen to Kanye's new record. I don't just listen to the record. I'm into it. I go get the, the, the notes on who produced it and who, who helped him produce that track and who sampled on that track. Just because I'm interested, because I'm, I'm into music. I'm into his music. So like I'm into juggling. I'm interested in juggling just as a hobbyist. I'm not talking about morality or ethics or money. I'm just talking about in my life. I'm like, Toby, where'd you get that trick? Like it's fun to have a discussion about juggling that's, a, that's deeper than, I don't know where I got it. Oh, it looks cool. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I don't know. Next trick, you know? It's like, hey man, where, where did you get inspired or where did you see that? Oh, you saw that from Emil? I never heard of Emil. Who's that? And then I find out who Emil is. That's fun. So that's, why, that's my motivation to start to care about where tricks come from. And so for example, when that first person taught me how to juggle three balls, instead of them saying, um, and now smile, they could have said, okay, now that you did those three balls, actually nobody knows where the first three ball trick came from. That's been lost in time. But here's another trick that uh, Steve Mills invented, or, or Rob Lubman, or we, we can discuss that later. But let's say Steve Mills. Um, it's called Mills Mess. And then I go, oh, Steve Mills, that's cool. And like, Steve's alive. He's on Facebook every fucking day. <laughs> like, you, can, you can talk to Steve Mills. Like, that's cool. You know, it's not like when you're playing guitar and you get the G minor chord and you're like, oh, who made the G minor chord? You can't like Facebook that person. I don't know. I think juggling is cool in that way to be like into, interested in it in that way. So I'm just kind of like pushing that opinion. And I think in the future, it would be cool that we did, that we kind of started to care about that. In the same way that when somebody taught me how to juggle, they said, that's the three ball cascade. And the thing is, you can make your own trick now. That would have blown my mind when I was eight years old. And not only, of course, I think to leave an eight-year-old who just started jug just, just the three catches of three balls to say, hey, you can make your own trick now, and then leave them, that doesn't work. But as a community, if we started to care about these things, and we wanted to evolve these things and push these values, then we could start to have little tools, little suggestions for my eight-year-old self. Hey, you know what? That's the three-ball cascade. Nobody knows who made it. There's another trick called Mills Mess. It looks like this. You know, Steve Mills made it. You can Facebook him. And you know what? You can make your own trick. And the way you start to make your own trick is if you do blah, 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 blah. And then I could have, and I could have saved like how many years of my life I wasn't making my own tricks. Because <laughs> now I love to make my own tricks. But back when I was eight years old, I just did all the tricks that were in the juggling from the Complete Clutz book. One up, two up, shower, reverse cascade, you know? So just to say as a culture, I'm not saying everybody has to be interested in making new tricks. What I'm saying is it would be sweet if we had conversations with each other about where our shit comes from. Because I'm just interested to, I don't know, like I like juggling, <laughs> like I'm into juggling. And following on from that, then I can say, for me personally, I would also include in that discussion, hey Emil, where did you do that ring balance trick? Did you make it up? Oh no, I saw it. You saw it? Who did you see do it? Sean Blue. Okay, now you're Sean Blue. Sean, uh, did you make up the trick? Uh, no, I no. saw You could just say yes to oh, the story. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you made up? Okay, cool. Do you mind if I work on it? Uh, no, no, that's fine. You can do it too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Is that fucking hard? And I'm just, I'm not saying I, I'm morally obligated to do that, or ethically, or motivated by money, or whatever. I'm just saying like, hey Sean, that's your trick. Do you mind if we have a discussion about your trick? Because Sean can say, you know what Jay, it's my trick, I don't want you to do it. And I can say, okay, well that's your opinion, and I do it anyway. But at least I know what Sean thinks. But at least I know what Sean thinks. Because I care about the community, and I care about juggling. I'm not just out there just doing whatever the fuck I want, alone. I'm in a community. Then Sean and I have a relationship. I know what Sean thinks about things. And I'm not saying, yeah, maybe it's not possible to, to tick off the list of every single trick you do to go research it. I'm just saying, can't we start to care about these things a little bit? It's not so hard for me to go see a trick in the gym these days and go up to the person and talk to them. 
and say, hey, oh, Sean, you don't want me to do your trick? Um, cool, do you mind if I learn it uh, just on my own? I don't show anybody and I make a variation and I only show people variations. And in fact, I only show you the variations before I show anybody else. Is that okay? That's okay with you? Yeah. You know, there's a, there's a way forward. If he says no to that, then I just fucking give it up. I don't, juggling is so young, it's 100 years old. We have not discovered all the tricks out there. So I think it's ridiculous. I, personally, my opinion, it's ridiculous we fucking have to copy tricks without permission, or without a discussion. It's not about permission, it's about respect. Respecting each other. I don't just go up to you and fucking take your shoes because I like them. Oh, those are your shoes? Cool, man. Well, you know what? In the shoe culture, I can just fucking take shit. <laughs> no! What's wrong with that? That's how it is with juggling. Fucking bullshit. It pisses me off. Sorry. Anyway. Right? I mean, you don't fucking steal shit. It's fucking wrong. Okay, that's my... Maybe I can get yelling a bit more later. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway. So, oh, following on from that. Uh-huh. Great, we're having a discussion now, and that's what I want. I mean, we can have a discussion. I mean, to, to actually answer your specific question, you're talking about a very specific culture of citation in academia. Is that what we want for juggling? Some people say no, some people say yes. Let's just fucking talk about it and have a, like a, a productive discussion and say, oh, there is some sort of area to agree on in the middle here. It's not just black or white. I mean, we should all just agree that stealing is ethically and morally wrong. And you can say what taking tricks or taking citations is not stealing. That's great. That's a discussion. But you have to agree that stealing is wrong or I can't have a discussion with you. So stealing is wrong. Great. Am I stealing if I take Emil's trick? No, I'm not stealing. Oh, then we can have a discussion about that. I can talk if I'm stealing or not. But the discussion, this discussion is not about is stealing wrong. We know stealing is wrong. But it's it, am I stealing? How am I stealing? Borrowing citation. Maybe, maybe it is enough to say... Here's multi, you know, trick. I never talked to you about it, but I just fucking did it, but I put your name there. Maybe that's cool. I don't know. We can talk about it. What's your, but here's the funny thing. You know, you exist in the world. I can talk to you about it right now, and we can have that conversation. Hey, man, is it, is it cool if I don't talk to you about any of your material and just take it and put your name on it? Is that enough? You can say yes or no. Right? We just have, like, a conversation. It's, it's totally chill. It's not like there's a policeman there with a gun, like, enforcing these things. It's just like community values and just like self-respect and like respecting, respecting others, I think. Um, so, yeah, it's just, a, 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 I mean, it's, I, we're not going to figure that out now, this discussion now, but it's, it's, it's the start of a discussion and that's a great question I would love to talk to you about when there's other time. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm sure there's a million different ways. Speaking of that, great segue. So I had this idea, and this is a very selfish idea, but I'm going to uh, share it to you because I think it's kind of a fun dream to have about the future of juggling. I had this idea about a trick database. And this trick database is not about claiming credit, it's not about having a big ego or whatever. It's about having a searchable database uh, for my, I'm, again, this is a very selfish desire. What I wish I had was something like, like Instagram, where you could search by hashtags, and it was all categorized, and you could have your own account. Like it's maybe a website, and you can have your account be private or public. I would put mine public. I would hope everybody would put theirs public. And then what you do, but listen man, listen to this. What I would do is, I would make up a three ball box variation. And I go, oh, I think I made up a three ball box variation. Let me just search the database really quickly. Three ball box variation, I get all the three ball box variations. Oh shit, Rick Rubenstein made that in 1983. <laughs> I didn't make up a three ball box variation, that's new. I made one up for me. Right? I would put all my shit public, like no joke. And I would just search it and I would have it for myself. It'd be a database for myself. The, the whole planet, we could just up, upload little videos, make it hashtag searchable. It'd be super fun. And you could have a little note and say, I made this up from watching a baton twirling video. You know, like the discussion could be online, it could be virtual. We could, be, we could connect it to each other more. Um, so, but just, yeah, we would have like a little trick database. You could have, like just for me, I don't, have, I don't know how I organize my own technique in my life. I have a bunch of shitty videos on my laptop that aren't labeled and they're, they're all uncategorized and there's no timestamp or date and this is like a mess. And I spend half my life um, um, organizing my, my, my content that I generate in my life. 
And whereas if I had like a system online, I could just up like from my phone, I take the, 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 the trick film, I, like Instagram, I drew a little trimming on it and I upload it publicly or privately. Um, and then it's, it, I have hashtags and then it's like all online and I just, oh, there's my three ball, there's my hundred three ball tricks I made this month. Um, that'd be pretty sweet. If everybody did it, it'd be super fun to see like all the three ball, and you know, maybe three ball box, you're gonna get 5,000 results. So maybe, maybe I made up a three ball box Mills Mess variation, and then you hashtag that, and you get the 20 videos of that. Oh, I did variation two, that's cool. I'll twist mine like this, or whatever. I don't know, it's just like a little fantasy in the future that there might be a, a thing. There was a question here. I hope so, yeah. Yeah. The last couple of ideas and then we're done. Oh my god, yeah. It's a conversation. It's a conversation to have. It's, it depends on the context. But I can give you a great example. I'll give you two great examples, maybe. Um, again, anything you do on your own, you're fine. You're just alone in your house doing whatever. As soon as you interact with somebody else in the community, then you have to deal with the context. So, for example, you know, Wes Peden did the the, arm, the ring flop floppy down the arm thing. So Zach McAllister. So Wes releases this video with like fucking 10 minutes of ring floppy down the arm thing. And then Zach McAllister goes online and he's just like, yo, I made that up two years ago. And you're like, okay, well, Wes Peden's the most famous bitch ever and he's put a video out. <laughs> you gotta fucking deal with it. I'm sorry, like you can be in isolation and you can say like, oh, I made up the triangle, bouncing in a triangle on my own. But when you come into the community, you have to understand that there's a person named Michael Motion and everybody knows who he is and he also made up the triangle. And it's a conversation. I'm not saying it should stop you or limit you or judge you in a certain way. You just have to recognize that that exists. So you can't be alone and just make something up and then just pop out of nowhere and be like, yo, I invented this brand, it's called Nike, it's a new brand. People are like, yeah, it's a shoe company. No, 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 I made up all on my own, it's called Nike. You can't, you can't stop that cultural force, like it exists already. You have to deal with it somehow. You have to interact with it somehow, interface with it somehow. You can't. You can't deny reality. Unless you are in your own closed community, then you can create your own reality there. And we can decide that colors have different names and objects have different names and we're all inventing things that are not connected to other parts of culture. Um, yeah? No, it's a, ca it's a casual conversation. If you see that on stage and that fucking bugs you, go talk to them. There's no police, there's no, there's no absolute right or wrong. It's just, it's just a, a quality of, of interest and respect for the culture. That's all I'm trying to promote. I don't have a right or wrong answer there. If I see somebody go on stage, I, 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 so I can say it like this. If I see somebody go on stage tonight and they do the, 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 the micro motion. Okay, no, fuck. Real, real story. I saw a dude rehearsing today, the beat. He's gonna do the B tonight in the show. The bouncing the ball and the B. If I gave a fuck enough to be like, if I knew enough about the history of the B, and I cared enough that he was doing it, I could go ask him and be like, yo, how, how, why are you doing the B? Is it like, how did you come to that? And he could be like, yeah, man, I had this whole body of work. I, I did the square first, and I did like the pyramid, and then I did the tunnel, and then I bounced off the roof, and then I finally found the V. I'd be like, that's sweet. Like, I want to see the roof bouncing, I want to see the pyramid bouncing, I want to see, like, I want to have the conversation. Or then you can say, oh, I watched Greg Kennedy on YouTube. 
And then I go, oh, well, we could have a little conversation about how that's maybe not the most useful thing to spread culture. And then we could, have, we could come to an understanding or not. I mean, you know, if you're like, oh, I saw this thing from Greg Kennedy on YouTube. And I go, OK, but is, does your thing give Greg Kennedy anything back? And he goes, no. And I go, no. Oh, maybe not the best thing. I agree, that's why it's context, that's why it's not black and white. I agree, there's context for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Woo! Sweet. Oh, right. <laughs> That's cool. Nice, man. Openjuggle.com. Sick. Thanks. Okay, last couple of points, um, and then we're done. So, thinking about the 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 the, the, his, the, ah, the future of juggling. Um, Right there. <laughs> um, people, but oh, I gotta, I gotta get my points out. Wait a second until I'm done, because it is gonna go. To, yeah. So uh, notation, like people think about notation. Um, people have been trying to do notation for years. People have been doing amazing notation. And I just want to bring up one concept about notation, which I don't know if, if is so. Um, normally talked about with notation. Like normally notation is about documenting what's there. And I think for me, the value of notation is about connecting large things of information in your head. So um, that you give, uh, basically a notation is a shorthand for a language, it's a language, that you can condense large chunks of information down to a very small, uh, memorable, you know, uh, chunk. And then you can hold a lot of these chunks together in your head at the same time, and then connections start to happen through, no, through notation in that way. Um, so in that way, I have this kind of uh, fantasy mission that I've kind of started to work on, um, which is to make a map of all of juggling. And like, if you had like a big piece of paper and you just wrote like club juggling here, and ball juggling here, and ring juggling here, and whatever the hell else is in juggling. And the map isn't to fill out it, the, the, the idea of the map isn't just to write down what there is, but it's to understand what, this, what the spaces are, like what are the blank areas. That's what I'm interested in. So I've been doing that for a few years now, kind of like I, as a hobby project, very lazily, very badly. But try to document like, here's club juggling, what's in, what's in club juggling? There's these techniques, there's these concepts. What's in ball juggling? Okay, where's the crossover? But also, oh, there's this area of ball juggling that's only in ball juggling. Maybe we can go there with club juggling too. So it's to make a map, but it's not necessarily to uh, write down, it, I mean, I want to write down everything there is, but it's not to see those things, because we already know those things, but it's to see the gaps and then fill in those gaps. I think that'd be a really fun thing to do in my life, or like a good use of my time juggling. Um, so to that end, I teach in a lot of circuit schools, and people ask me all the time, how can I be original, and how can I be innovative, <laughs> and how can I be personal, and, and all these things. And it's super easy. Um, you can just have to do mixed prop, mixed prop juggling. Or just don't juggle the same props everybody else does. Um, that's very easy to do. <laughs> you can be the person who juggles two rings and a ball. That could be your thing, because nobody does that yet. That's not anybody's thing. Some people have played around with two rings and a ball, but it's not their identity in juggling yet. We have so much uh, technique to discover. It's only 100 years old, this whole thing we're doing right now. It's only 100 years old. There's so much to discover. Um, just, just use different props. That's, that's all you can, I mean, and I think that's a way forward. So for me, maybe this may be maybe the last thing I say. I don't know, there's a lot of other random shit here. Um, okay, I'll say one last thing and then I'll take a couple questions and then we'll go away. Um, my dream, which maybe is gonna happen, I don't know, or not, like in, in 10 years, I don't know. I wanna have a juggling studio and uh, in the studio, on the wall, I'm gonna have like, like, um, like the balls. I'm gonna have a ball 
in every color, uh, every shade of every color, like up to maybe the tertiary colors, uh, of like every size between like 40 millimeters up to like 100 millimeters, of every material of like stage ball, MMX, Russian, bouncing ball. I also want to have then the different sizes of wooden balls, metal balls, and like bronze, titanium, copper, whatever. Um, and I want to have like bigger balls too, of course, like balloon size or, or, or you know. And then when I do a juggling trick, I make up a new trick and I go, oh, I made this new trick with three balls, but maybe it's better with those light blue balls. And then I take the light blue balls and I go, oh, maybe it's better if I have one light blue ball and one copper ball. And then I do blah, blah, blah. Like, this is the fantasy. That I have like all the balls, I have all the rings and all the sizes and all the colors, and I have all the clubs in all the colors. And uh, all the other shapes too, I have cubes and rectangles and blah, blah, blah. And that's my dream juggling studio. And then I make up a new trick and I don't just go, oh, that trick was pretty cool. Um, I'll make a new trick. I go, well, that trick was cool, but maybe it's even cooler with a club that's two centimeters longer. And then it's even cooler for whatever reason. <laughs> Um, I know it's like a completely stupid idea, but um, that's maybe an ideal fantasy and already that, that um, fantasy has really driven a lot of my work recently and been really productive and inspirational. So I think in the future, um, we have to really care about what tools we're using, um, not just use the same tools unless you want to. And uh, if you want to be innovative and personal and new and whatever, just don't, use, just don't go online and buy the same thing everybody has. And it's so easy. To, to do something new in juggling because it's so unexplored because we all have the same props as everybody else and we all just do variations of variations um, in this very narrow uh, space, right? You just walk around the gym out there, everybody's using the same stuff. They're doing awesome things and nothing wrong with it, but just to say, it's just like we're in a very, very narrow tunnel of expression with the tools that we're using, with the, with the shapes and the things we're touching, with the objects, right? Um, all the prop vendors more or less sell the exact same length, weight, shape, material. Um, it's very hard to get something else to get to get a different thing for now. But again, um, if people in the in the community started to want to push that forward, I think the manufacturers would respond appropriately. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, question, maybe the question here or. share that. I mean, you just do good juggling that you like. Well, just go talk to people. I mean, everything I just said. Go make your own props. Go, go talk to people about where tricks come from. Go study the history. Go make up a definition of juggling and talk to people what it could be. And then, I don't know, like... Okay. I mean, I'm not one of those people who think that the future of juggling... So, this one thing about talking about new props, it's an economy of scale. So the one reason that the manufacturers who make like Henry's and Play, they don't make new things so easily is because there's just nobody to buy them. And so then you could say, okay, if I really want to have a new club shape, um, I should have 20,000 more people juggling because it's the law of averages because then you'll get enough, uh, you'll get 20 more people who actually want to have that new shape of club. And then Davide will be like, oh, I'll make a little money on that or I'll break even. So it could be a law of averages things where I could be interested in saying I need 20,000 more people to become jugglers, but personally I'm not one of those people who wants to teach the planet to juggle. I don't really care. 
Um, it goes back to that idea of Circus Decor being a circus company instead of a theater company. Um, I like being a big fish in a small pond and sometimes, except when I want my weird shaped club. Um, <laughs> little, no, but I mean, of course I love it when other people come and are interested in juggling. And I do really um, get worried sometimes. I look around at the manufacturers. Now we have Rio Yabe coming up, but when Tom Renegade quits and when uh, uh, Duke Brian Dubé quits and all these things, like in America, it's a, it's a fucking tragedy. Um, there's no new prop manufacturers coming, and I think our community is pretty fragile if you think about um, the amount of people we are and the pillars of the community, or you know, just the people who really drive the community forward. I'm not talking about me at all, I'm talking about people who do the real work. Um, there's not a lot of us, and it's, uh, I always, I always, like for example, I always get really uh, uh, surprised when people apply to the juggling program at DOC. It's like, really? Somebody wants to juggle with their life? That's so weird and cool. Uh, my mom's just like, people applied again? Like, who are these people? So I, I don't take for granted the next generation, is what I mean. Like, I do really think about who's going to fill these roles in the future, and who might give a lecture of the future of juggling in the future. Um, I don't know, it's just something, again, to, to have a discussion about or think about as we go forward as a community. Do we want to harness this energy and pull people in and kind of define those roles more or encourage people more? I don't know fucking how to do it. But I think it's really nice to talk about it and be aware of it. Um, la last question. You mean the lens ball? Yeah, it was just, yeah, it was just contact balls that were remarketed. Yeah, but now they're marketing it as the lens for your phone. Have you seen that shit? No. Yeah, it's like it's the Fushigi that you hold in front of your, your iPhone and take a photo. It's, like, it's literally the same thing. It's so fucked up. back to also when you teach someone how to juggle, uh, like it, especially if you go, if you're hired by a corporation to go in and teach employees how to juggle, <laughs> what's the main objective? Is it really to teach them the three ball cascade? For me it's not. It's to teach them teamwork and leadership skills and self-esteem and like all these catchphrases. Um, so I think it's really funny when people do corporate workshops, with, especially with like employees and they're just like, no, you're doing it wrong. No, don't hand it across. No, wrong, mistake, wrong. It's so fucked up. Like, you're just there for an hour. Who gives a fuck if they juggle three balls? I don't care. It's better to, it's better to go there and be like, yeah, you're handing them across. That's awesome. Now let's also try to throw them both up. If I cared about that, I don't care about that. It's more that they participate. That's the point of me being there to get paid, you know, a thousand bucks to do that hour. Um, so what's our true intention when we pull somebody into the juggling community? Is it to really teach them the technique and kill them with the learning curve, right? Or is it to maybe empower them and give them a, another vision of what juggling can be? or how we can be inspired and, and catch them into the passion. So, um, yeah, and that's, that's, again, when I teach beginners to juggle personally, I don't really teach them the three, the three ball cascade. We do a lot of other stuff, and then if they want to do the three ball cascade and there's time and it's appropriate and there's context, we'll do it. Um, but, you know, I don't know. How many, you know, how many times do you go do a show or, or meet someone and then you teach them something fun and they go, normally I hate juggling, but you were really good. Um, that's like a normal thing I hear a lot. I don't know if you get, you know, if something good with juggling, people go, oh, normally jugglers suck, but you were good. Yeah. And um, just to say in the future, there's not going to be, um, there's not going to be uh, that poetry sucks or mime sucks um, or juggling sucks. It's just the genre of good and bad. There's things that are good and they are good and it can be poetry and cooking and architecture and juggling. And there's things that suck and it's just bad juggling and bad poetry and bad architecture. I mean, it's the genre of good is the future. That's my end. Bye. <laughs>